I'm Stephen Foskett, organizer of Tech Field Day and publisher of Gestalt IT, and we're here for a Tech Field Day roundtable discussion. Now, most of us around the table for Tech Field Day have been focusing on, well, all sorts of different technologies. That's kind of the beauty of the Tech Field Day community. We have people who are into networking, uh, security, storage, virtualization, cloud, uh, wireless, all sorts of different topics here. And yet, and yet, almost every one of those dis disciplines, domains, is touched by the products of a few companies. Now, some companies make hardware, uh, some companies make software, uh, but one company in particular is undergoing a transition right now, and that's VMware. So, as most, of, most people have heard, uh, VMware is being acquired by Broadcom. Uh, it appears now that that is likely to go forward. And of course, that's raised a lot of concerns in the industry about what this means for the future of uh, VMware as a company, VMware as a product, but also, and more importantly, I would argue, what it means for the customers and the people that are using the VMware products on a day-to-day -day basis. And so that's the topic for this first roundtable discussion. Now, um, since uh, you suggested it, Ken, I'm gonna put you on the spot and say, uh, maybe lead us off here um, in terms of what do you think is the, uh, what does the future hold for VMware customers? Ain't nobody ditching ESXi anytime soon, right? Uh, I, I'm gonna borrow a term that you used, Stephen, I heard you use one time, VMware is the keystone of the data center. And um, making a decision about what hypervisor to run in ancillary tools is very tactical. But if a company strategically decides whether or not to stay on-prem or go to the cloud, then that will kind of dictate which direction they go in tactically. Um, VMware wants to be more than just the virtualization company, right? They've been trying to transform themselves into a cloud company, whether that's private cloud or their multiple public cloud solutions uh, for the past few years. Um, and I do think that the majority of enterprise companies want to adopt a cloud-like architecture even if they stay on-prem, meaning things like self-service and making it easier for their customers, like, like an application team, developers, to be able to procure the resources they need quickly. VMware has a play there. Whether the customers see value in that extended play beyond the hypervisor, I think is the bigger question. Because it's not really possible to just easily displace the entirety of the stack that all their compute storage and networking uh, map into in, in a rapid manner, personally. So I think in the near term, we're probably not gonna see a whole lot of shift from customers, what they're doing today tactically within their data center. Over the next few years, strategically, we might see a different direction for certain customers. We've seen this over the past few years anyway, right? More and more customers yeah. deciding whether or not they're gonna be on-prem with certain applications or not. Well, I, let, me, let me interject something here. I, Please do. I, I, the value added of VMware has always been with the existing legacy architecture, server, client, guest OS. There's a huge shift going on with architectures for applications besides commercial off-the-shelf software. We're looking at cloud native, whatever you want to call it, Kubernetes. Those things are going to drive the direction of, are you keeping the ROI from your investment? I'll call it an investment for licensing. Licensing is expensive. On-premise hardware is expensive because of people maintaining it, doing, you know, keeping it up and running, working well, patching it, what have you. So it comes to the point where those value equations are always going to be on the table for discussion. And, and anyone who's gonna be doing the licensing and purchasing has to be able to see far enough to say, oh, this is still a value, we're getting something out of it. So the immediate feature, no one's gonna shift away. What other choice do you have? Exactly. And and the other point is, this fear that everyone has, and all my customers have, are how is the pricing gonna be impacted? What hostage, what juices they're gonna squeeze out of our existing customer? Mm -hmm. Because there are momental shifts in the past five years of subscription, software licensing. And that just, it, it's always been subscription for VMware. If you look at the SNS, it can't be interrupted. So it's subscription. But perpetual licensing is not going to be an option. The portfolio is changing. The value added proposition is changing. So VMware as a whole, as an industry, has its place, but it doesn't mean it can keep its place unless it can continue to deliver the value of, in, in that equation calculation. If, if I can add something here, I mean, one of the biggest problems that VMware has today yep. is that they are not perceived as a player in, in the next generation application development like mm -hmm. Kubernetes. And this will lead many users, actually it's already there, I mean, so users are shifting their interest to you know, Kubernetes players, 
native players. It could be anything. It could be you know cloud native, uh, so public cloud, big clouds, or it could be a Kubernetes provider like OpenShift, Red Hat, and so the, this will uh, in the next few years we will see many more applications for which yes of course we will have still virtual machines but kubernetes will provide mechanisms to give you the one two three virtual machine that you have for that application to be oh, managed by kubernetes for example and then so that the area of interest for the for the for the user will shrink dramatically and then and vmware will have you know less you know, uh, grasp on, on the on the client, and that's add. If we add the, that many of the tools that are you know uh, surround the, the the core ESXi can be replaced by others, like I mean automation, uh, orchestration, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, over time, because you want to uh, anyway to manage your data center, your operation, multi cloud operations with you know. A single tool, if possible. So, and and again, the competition will be harder and harder for them. I, I agree. I, I think it's all touched on great points there. Um, with VMware and and the industry, you know, you've touched on their large capex investments. You know, paying large sums of money to get kit and hardware. You know, companies that we would have referred to previously as server vendors have now pivoted to become cloud companies. Uh, and they're helping that financially with OPEX models, you know, um, HP GreenLake, Delflex, um, Apex increasingly. Um, that, that's shifting to the, the OPEX model and, and avoiding those large sums of investment for long periods of time. Um, VMware has a fantastic single pane of glass view across multiple clouds, and, and that's where they're doing, they're doing very well in terms of Kubernetes. You know, they, they have Tanzu there. Tanzu makes it very easy to deploy, update, maintain, secure, run Kubernetes workloads. But they have competition, obviously, from the likes of OpenShift there, that it, it, it's singing grace with developers that I've spoke to, is it makes it easy to deploy applications. And more often than not, companies will have significantly more developers than they will, you know, ops, back-end people. So it, it's a very difficult challenge and for Tanzu specifically, I think, to penetrate the market. And this is something that I've um, followed very closely, and I've even put like my tinfoil hat on and read everybody's blog posts about like the conspiracy theories and all that good stuff. Um, one thing I remember reading at one point is that Broadcom was potentially thinking about kind of combining VMware with their security portfolio and kind of making it this one thing they're going to treat as a unit. Which I think is really interesting because if we look at the rise of uh, ransomware, I know we're talking containers, but I got to bring it back to ransomware. We know that VMware is a huge target. Uh, we know that it's very easy to compromise these environments, yet no one pays attention to it whatsoever. And I think in a way that this Broadcom thing might be a good thing um, because it's creating a lot of buzz, right? So anytime we create about buzz about something, that's a great opportunity for education. And you know, VMware itself, uh, personally, I kind of feel like there hasn't been much innovation in the core hypervisor in a while, right? And like, like how far can you go, right? We, we've done all these crazy things. It, it works well, like what else is there? So maybe, you know, a new set of eyes, um, kind of a new way to look at things, especially since we're talking about Tanzu and Kubernetes and all that kind of stuff. You know, maybe we're gonna see a little bit of a reinvigoration as well in kind of some of the VMware portfolio. That's kind of what I'm hoping for. And I think it's gonna go two, one of two ways, right? Nothing's gonna change and it's just gonna sit there until, I don't know. And we'll just be seeing, you know, patch updates and things like this, or maybe kind of, you know, we'll be injecting um, some love kind of back into the core hypervisor virtualization and maybe some additional security features as well, because I, we know this is a huge target for hackers, but it doesn't seem like there's been much done about it over the last couple of years. I I agree with those two paths. Uh, my my concern is anytime we see an acquisition like this, most frequently we see that latter or that former path where the, yeah, the, acquire, know, the acquiring company, like... <laughs> especially I, VMware is in a position right now where they're a cash cow of a company. Uh, there's a lot, like Ken said, there's a lot of VMware spread all over the world, and that's a lot of perpetual uh, licensing that gets paid every year, and it's a great 
you know, if I was investing my money and wanted to make 23% every year, not creating new features would be a good way to do that. Well, I, I want to jump in on that because so far I've heard a couple of interesting points from y'all. Number one, um, what about Kubernetes and cloud, right? Uh, then we get, what about security? Then we talk about, yeah, investing in new features. Um, might I remind you that these are the exact areas VMware just spent the last three, four, five years investing and developing? Mm -hmm. And these are also the exact areas that people are speculating won't be invested in and continued under a new management focused on more maintenance than development. So I think it's, it's kind of amazing. I mean, I don't want to say it, but you know, I mean, VMware has Tanzu, uh, they've got, you know, Carbon Black, and they've got all this other stuff that they've been working on, all these other new technologies. Where do those go? Should customers be scared to use those things, which I will again say are the exact things you guys just said was what they need to do next. Should the customers be scared to, to get into that because is that going to change? I, I think that the Tanzu proposition of Kubernetes or VMware should be delivered as a service, period. If it's delivered as a service on premises or in the cloud, it changes the equation. Who wants to develop the expertise to maintain that infrastructure, that framework, that paths, when you have so many options in the cloud today that will deliver it as a service? It's, it's, it's great to say, yeah, I got it running. But when you say, oh, I got a huge, oh my God, what's the puzzle piece? How do I maintain this? How do I keep it going? That is the value add. If VMware can make it, and this is my opinion only, you know, make it so it's a service, agile service that's delivered as a subscription, there is the value add to the customer. Well, there is another problem. I mean, if you look at Tanzu, uh, well, maybe if you look at Tanzu, there are many problems, but, <laughs> but you know, the most visible probably is that they are not appealing to developers oh, in no, any yeah. way. I mean, they didn't understand that they, yeah. they are not talking with the same kind of decision maker that they de dealt with in the past. I mean, you can imagine the guy with the suit and the, uh, and the tie talking with the, with the other guy with, you know, slippers and, you know, and the Cody? Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, I mean, the, the, the developer is a, is a genius, but he doesn't care to talk with the, with the guy with the tie. So he wants to talk with another developer. Same language, same technical level. They don't trust you know, these kind of people. And this is the first problem. So, in the development community, Tanzu is practically non-existent. E non and uh, the second problem is that they are behind anyway. So, yeah. to, to keep this enterprise support that the developer don't care about, the developers don't care about enterprise support. I mean, enterprise support comes later, way later when they adopted the technology, started using it in production probably, they are getting support from the community and only then somebody at the decision-making level say, oh, we are using this technology, we have to uh, you know, have a support contract, we have to have an official uh, communication with the vendor, et cetera, et cetera. And then they start thinking about contracts and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. How many times you saw, you know, uh, a project that is just at the very beginning, alpha stage, used by developers in production. I saw it in the last couple of times, years, many, many times. So VMware is not in that position. So they, they can't win. And, and why, if the developers is not starting using Tanzu, then they, you know, they don't become critical for the decision-making persons in, in the organization. Well, and, and really, what, what's the value prop of using Tanzu off, over using, like, pick your cloud Kubernetes service, right? Yeah. Uh, it's, especially once you're in the cloud, because really you're only just paying VMware to run your Kubernetes at that point when you could be getting it practically for the cost of just compute from your cloud vendor. I think timing is a huge issue when you talk about what's next for VMware customers as well, right? Because a lot of them have huge contracts that last for multiple years, and so, they want to get the value out of the investment, to your point, right, until that contract ends, and they're going to plan ahead for when does my contract end for most customers. If it's ending within the next year or so, maybe they're not major, making any major shifts because they have no idea what's going to happen to Broadcom and these technologies that they're investing in. Maybe they don't pick up anything new, but maybe, maybe they don't make any major changes. I, I think on the Broadcom side, the, on, the only certainty we have right now is 
some form of change. We just don't know what that. Right. Yeah, price is. increase. That's yeah. the, that's a certainty. <laughs> price increase. There, there will yeah, definitely it, be a price. It, it may come that way. Uh, with regards to what Enrico was saying around Tanzi, Tanzi from the ops perspective seems much more manageable, easier to install, deploy, patch, maintain, secure, upgrade. You know, operation side of it. Developers are looking, you know, they're, they're probably running Red Hat and looking at OpenShift as, oh, that's an extension of, of the device that I work on every day. You know, they, that's the ecosystem they're looking at. They're not look, looking at the back-end operations side yes. at all. DevOps has to marry those two things together, you know, sandwiched in the middle. Well, I mean, any, any developer is going to say, why do I need a VM? Why does this need to run on a VM? And so by Tanzu trying to establish that value prop that keeps their relevance place at the table. So then you can run the, your Kubernetes in a VM and have all those other benefits. So we, we, We've seen that Tanzu can accelerate application deployment, but a lot of developers are obtuse to even looking at it. Yeah. They don't view it as... A, a yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't see where it accelerates app, um, application deployment any better than any other Kubernetes. Right. Because like, yeah. it's all going to be done in some kind of DevOps pipeline. And it's just going to be, you know, which provider do you call to deploy your Kubernetes cluster and contain and pods? So, I mean, my 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 view of this is like keeping the lights on and the plates still spinning because that's where the money makers are. That's where the the companies have to keep their investment going. You now, mean SAP? <laughs> well, you know, that's a different model. Well, that's but, real simple. Well, all these <laughs> well, no, I mean, I mean, hosting SAP and commercial off-the-shelf yeah. software has to have a place, has yeah. to have a home. Homegrown applications are legacy; they're not going to go away until you get that momentum click button that you can convert it over to a cloud-native Kubernetes. You're not going to have that today, and they don't have the resources. So, you know, having the enterprise support is a big deal, and then that's 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 where that you know safety net has, exists. But to the to the point of Stephen's conversation is. This transition to a Broadcom owned entity is going to be a financially driven motives, which are clear. And they're going to keep, they want to make the ROI as an investor as, as they purchase this huge baby. You know, don't call it the baby ugly, right? So you're going to want to keep that going and make everybody happy. But strategically, how can the Broadcom acquisition make it better for the VMware customer? That's the question we have to ask ourselves and drive that to the new owners to keep that relevance. Because you've seen the history repeat itself. You saw when CA bought a lot of stuff in the past, it destroyed things, right? Yeah. You, saw, you saw what happened when Computer Associates did that. And, and you've seen the model transition from Office on-prem to Office 365. And it's a huge money maker for Microsoft. So there's opportunity to make money, just that we need to be as advocates for the customer and technologists to, to push the management in that direction to benefit everybody. Yeah. Well, that's but, just my opinion. And, yeah, so I guess it depends uh, what is their model to get the return on investment out of this. Is this, is this going to be, all right, we're going to take a few core products and move them towards next generation, or is this a, we're going to buy this, they're, they're going to do, are they going to do the same thing that they did with like Fiber Channel, where, all right, let's grab Brocade, let's gut it, get rid of a bunch of other components, and then just keep the legacy money coming in and get our return that way. I mean, and that, those are two very different I, outcomes for customers. I would feel like anything, it's a matter of how much time you want to invest in it. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's much easier to say, okay, we're purchasing this. Let's really give 200%. Let's put it in, rip it apart, figure it out, you know, see what works, see what doesn't, or as opposed to now, you know what, let's just look at it from a dollars and cents perspective. Right. Can't do that. And the, I'll just, I just want to jump in. I don't want to really speculate too much on what Broadcom may or may not do because exactly. we really don't know. Those are now, we know what they did last time, and yeah. you're right about that, Chris. But, but but we kind of don't know what they're doing here, but I love what Vroom is, is bringing up here because in my mind, so we were at VMware Explore, many of us went to VMware Explore. In my mind, the subject of VMware Explore, the, the keynote topic was not vSphere 8 or anything else. It was a pitch from VMware management to Hawk Tan to say, this is where we want VMware to go. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was them telling the new company this is what we want. So again, positively, and with, uh, with, with purpose to say that we want to have VMware go to the cloud, we want to continue to invest in Tanzu and Kubernetes. And I love that idea, that question of sort of, maybe VMware can do something positive here. So what do you guys think of that? I mean, wh where do you take this conversation? I think VMware are very well equipped to, to, to take workloads to the cloud. You know, NSX has let them extend into all of the 
meet your hyperscalers? They're yeah, but variable. the problem there is the same problem we had with Tenzu, which is it is insanely difficult to configure and set up NSX. Way it's a levels of scale more complicated than ESXi is. Mm -hmm. So from a customer perspective, I feel like ESXi is VMware. I'm sorry, vSphere is e VMware, and all these other things are what VMware has tried to do in kind of a half baked manner. You know, I agree with your point about Tanzu in the sense that people would love to use it. It should probably be a service. NSX. Same thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, NSX came out when it first came out. You weren't even allowed to install it yourself. Mm -hmm. Then there was a couple of years of development, and then all of a sudden, what did they say? Oh, we're going to NSXT now. Change everything that you just learned. Yep. That does not engender confidence when a customer is going to massively swap out their networking and virtual networking environments to support this one tool that if something goes wrong, now you lose your entire network. And VMware then has you a pattern of doing that, too, right? right. And then That's keep, exactly what I mean. And you keep stacking upon those products and expanding that out. Now from you know NX, NSXT, you go to the next one, the next one. You see, you're not really putting your effort in that in my opinion that's just that's not healthy that's not good business because again if you're going to do that then look at it from a support aspect you can't if you can't even deploy it right and if other engineers on that perspective then how are they supposed to help you with it when at the same time you've had public uh, all three public cloud providers deploy really good virtual networking stacks right. that are easy yeah. to use and pretty straightforward yeah, there's different approaches to it what i really always have appreciated about vmware is if you're having a conversation with the customer and they present a challenge to you. VMware is going to have something that's going to be strategically aligned with that direction. They have a strategy, a, a platform. For, if that ethos can continue and, and then add to it the simplicity of a managed service of a hyperscaler, that changes the equation. Because now that you can say, hey, I can justify a higher price margin because it's as a service, and I can ensure stability and less complexity. And but, customer confidence. Exactly. Because then it's like, oh, I don't have to worry about that as much because it's managed and, I've, and it's justified and it's paid for. But if VMware can't get their hands on it, in my opinion, that manageability, because it's, we're having a conversation that cattle and pets, you know, is, is VMware going to change their delivery model to be more like pets or more like cattle, which is what people want? And that's just more simplicity, easier to zoom and do I stuff. Let's talk about something real quick, like a little softer, not as techy. Um, somebody just said, and I don't remember who, when you hear VMware, you think of ESXi and vSphere, like full stop. You hear VMware, you think ESXi, when VMware really is a company with all this other stuff too. And just speaking from kind of like a product marketing standpoint, like renaming stuff and changing that is really, really hard. So this is almost like a really good opportunity for kind of a reboot of the portfolio and the story and all that stuff to maybe try to get away from the everything that makes no sense. And when Broadcom does pick the lines they're going to focus on or keep going with or all that have you, um, kind of just like a, a retooling and rebooting from a marketing perspective should try to get away from, well, everybody hears VMware and thinks of vSphere when there's really a lot more to it. So there's a lot of opportunity just to clean up some of those softer things that have always been kind of confusing and that VMware struggled with from a messaging perspective, quite honestly, that it probably mm. hurt adoption of some of these products. Um, so like I said, a lot of opportunity here too. The messaging seems to change year over year from VMware though. That's the mo that's the worst part, is that they have a theme, every VMware Explorer, oh, VMware yeah. keynote, and that's what the salespeople sell for the next year until the next conference comes around. And so the messaging about what VMware can do beyond just being a virtualization company, is different every year. And just as a customer gets into the mindset of whatever VM we're selling, they switch it up on them. So we, we talk about a, a VMware as an enterprise play, but actually there are a lot of SMB around that are using yeah. VMware. Yeah, for sure. And, and you know, with this Broadcom stuff happening, I mean, uh, I think that many small companies will rethink their strategy around VMware. I'm talking about small shops, so it's not huge investment, but there are many. And they are thinking about, you know, other types of hypervisors because they don't really need all the features that, you know, uh, VMware provides. So they can uh, go to KVM or they can go to, you know, uh, uh, Nutanix alternatives or, you know, other things. What do you think about that? I think there's a certain amount of it just works and it doesn't cost that much at that scale uh, that's going to as long as Broadcom doesn't come in and make dramatic pricing changes or anything like that if if everything kind of stays neutral I think a lot of those organizations 
aren't going to want to make the investment to to switch platforms because it's a big deal. Like the, you're talking about orgs that either work through an MSP or maybe have you know two or three IT staff, and they, and they probably know VMware pretty well at this point. So switch that's a big paradigm shift for them to switch and probably not see a lot of value outside of some discounts in the first year. Yeah, I think in in that case, VMware with vSphere is kind of a victim of their own success. Yeah, I mean it is the bedrock product. Somebody said earlier of the data center. And I completely agree with that, regardless of the size. Um, I suspect that one thing that might happen is people will have their valid via VMware 7 licenses, never upgrade, not pay for support, and that stuff will run indefinitely until the hardware fails. Perpetually. Yeah. <laughs> when Would for people yeah. really, I mean, is, didn't we just talk about this, that the whole thing they're paying for is supportability? Yeah, but that's what I mean. That's you a different need mindset. Support on ESXi because ESXi just works. Yeah. And the enterprise when, mindset is so much different than the SMB mindset. It's like I want to keep the lights on versus yeah. like I want to have continuity of operations because I lose money in an enterprise for every second I'm down. Versus the SMB is like I just want to keep the lights on as inexpensively as possible. When then SMB uh, up even through SME that that you've got um, is so much documentation out there for off the shelf software being deployed in VMware. Um, so you've got the supportability and sustainability, um, not necessarily from like li licensing and support, but there's so much documentation out there that if you run into something, Community you can well. figure. Yeah, you can yeah. figure it out. You don't necessarily uh, pull them in. Time out. But Melissa's going to tell you uh, something different about the enterprise risk <laughs> if you let it go stale. <laughs> I'll be nice. I'm going to play nice here. Um, but there are some really valid points for the SMB here as well, too. Uh, you could also make the case that if you're a smaller shop it could be easier to move to an alternative hypervisor, but you could also make the case that you need to stay on VMware because that's what my people know and that's what they're good at. Yeah. So I'm not gonna rock the boat too much because I'm already so understaffed and I don't wanna make any major changes. But yeah, um, with the whole VMware kind of thing, does, does anybody remember we had those releases and they were like really bad and- Security fixes? They got <laughs> pulled back and like they didn't work and all that stuff. So we can say all we want, it, support doesn't matter, but if I guess as long as you're not upgrading, you're okay, right? But the, that code quality issue, um, if you're not under support at that point, that would been, have been something that would be really not so much fun, no matter what kind of organization you are. Yeah, I think everybody's going to want a supported solution, especially for such an important component mm -hmm. as the bedrock, I mean, it's uh, of, of the entire enterprise data center. They, they want support. They want bug fixes. They want somebody watching for security issues and vulnerabilities and fixing those. And yeah, I just don't see them... Yeah, no uh, valid license, no no patch yeah. download. Sorry. So, yeah, I, I, on the SMB side, I think that there are other choices though too, um, and I think that that's one thing that um, SMBs are starting to look at is uh, choices like Nutanix, choices like uh, scale computing, um, choices like you know building something with uh, Cropless or with uh, KVM or or you know using an alternative. Um, uh, distribution that supports uh, virtualization and containerization. So we'll see uh, where that goes. But I think overall, I, I would like to get back to Ken's first point. I, actually, I want to end on exactly the thing that Ken said at the beginning, because I think that's the, 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 the real summary for me. I completely agree with Ken that customers are not, 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 not going to just walk away from VMware. No, no. This acquisition is not going to drain the, the use of, VM, of, of VMware vSphere in the enterprise data center, absolutely. In fact, I don't think it's going to cause much uh, much more than a ripple in terms of the number of use, use uses. It, the question is what happens after that. Eventually, will they start coming off of it? What will VMware do about that? Will VMware try to keep them there with advanced technologies? And I guess we can't be sure, but we've brought up a lot of interesting questions here. And, and the SMB question, I think, is perhaps the most open one in terms of what are people, what are those companies going to do if uh, VMware focuses more on the larger enterprises and is less focused on the smaller ones, and if licensing changes and things. I think there could be a lot of differences there.